They go along the bottom here and then they come up the front. So the idea with these Russian stoves is to have the hot gases touch all your bricks and warm all your bricks. So after an hour and a half or two hours of burning this thing, there's enough mass that'll stay hot, quite warm for, I don't know, a small one like this, maybe three hours. Guys, people ask me, Matt, what do you do for fun? Well, it's Friday night, the day after Thanksgiving. People are out making merry with friends and family, and I'm down here in my basement dungeon, Russian stove building with these little mini bricks. These, I thought the bricks would be much better. These little piece of shit bricks came in. So I go over here, and this guy's given his, well, he's, he's trying to show you how to build it. It's all in Russian. <laughs> И вполне комфортно, если, допустим, помещение небольшое, там 4 на 4, допустим, протопили вечером, трубу закрыли. И... So he lays down a damn layer on this Russian stove. I come over here, mix up the two-part epoxy, got the damn plans all written out here, and then I put a layer on the damn stove. I think, look, you put the, you put the wood in there, this thing would actually burn. I'm not sure it'll heat a house. This little, this is my hand for it, just to show you the perspective of how small this little piece of shit is. This is what I do for fun. You're taking reality advice from me? I should be booked into an insane asylum. Okay, this is the first, quote, Russian stove that I built. Um, simple design by a gentleman named Vladimir. I forget his last name. I found a YouTube video all in Russian. This is the simplest one you can build. And I'll show you... Uh, how to build it. Anybody with access to about a hundred and... Uh, 205 to 115 bricks. Uh, you'll never be cold. You always have... A, this This is better than any wood stove that exists that's iron. Um, storing thermal mass, storing heat through brick and rock and stone is ten times better than an iron wood burning stove. By the way, this this chimney I just have it jammed up here it, it doesn't go anywhere when I test hey guys it, it's Matt to my regular I subscribers this is not going to be for 80% of you I appreciate <laughs> you putting up with this I, I don't want to start a <laughs> through whole the, channel through the ladder I don't just one blow the smoke up into my wall there um, but many of us are into preparing right prepping this is the stove before it's assembled I think it turned out to be in the mid 80s in terms of the number of fire bricks it is heat available for anybody that can store bricks. They don't have to be fire bricks. They can be pavers, clay, or shale, or is it shale or slate pavers. Anybody that can store bricks like this can have an emergency heat source when they need it. And I'm going to basically walk you through the process of every bit of it. It is slightly complicated if you're not used to how these Russian stoves are made with the channels of gases going up and down. So it will get more detail. There aren't any more images of me or not too many more of me on camera, so I could prove I'm not a stable diffusion character for those interested in that. It really will evolve into somebody that really wants to be able to build this thing as an emergency heat source or build it permanently. Um, you can clean it up. I have, I didn't make many cuts. You could make the cuts, clean it up, veneer it with a tile or another outer layer of brick. It would look beautiful. You could easily uh, put this in your house uh, I don't know how it would hold up to code or all inspection and all that crap, but it would be better than almost any wood stove, iron wood stove you can buy, and they're all becoming illegal anyway. So, sorry, not much here. And anybody that stumbled upon this interested in stoves, like, get to it. Somebody's like, get to it. I'm not going to get to it. This is very detailed. You'll learn a lot about Russian stoves, stove making. I'm not going to get to it if you stumbled upon this. If you're not prepared to put your feet up, go look at some cat videos. Two more things before we get started. Yes, that's me in the picture. You think it would be, I'd put some random kid up, some little kid? That'd be sick. That's me in 1975 or so. I don't know when exactly it was at the Montessori school. The second part, guys, the reason I'm doing this, I should have mentioned it earlier, is this stove design, you need almost no skills. All these guys doing the rocket stoves on YouTube, they can weld and all these, they're tinkerers and secondary air, secondary air and all this bullshit. You don't need any skills. 
if I mean, this is the stove. If you are not a handyman, you don't, anybody can do it with a little patience. That's the beauty of this. Now, one more thing, detailed plans will be given at the end. It will get more and more detailed and less interesting and entertaining for most of you as this goes on. Um, and I will even link or show you a lot of the, uh, our, our friend Vladimir who shared, I want to say it's not his technique. I mean, this basic technique of Russian stove building has probably been going on for close to a thousand years. So he just uh, put a nice video together that I copied and I employed a little bit more of a rocket stove design. Gets more detailed as it goes on and caters to those that actually want to build this thing as it goes on. Okay guys, I'm just showing you that this thing burns and drafts properly. I'm really not being irresponsible with this. Um, it's just two fire starters. I mean, I would never in the garage burn any real wood in here, but you can see the draft already. Um, let me show you. Let me get the, where's the lighter? I mean, I just started it up and let's see. As soon as you put this around the corner, you'll see that it suck it in. So it's it drafts properly immediately. Just like almost any rocket stove does. I'm trying to combine the idea of a rocket stove here with a Russian stove. And it's in my garage, but look. There's already hardly anything coming out. Any embers would be trapped in, I don't know how many pounds this is, you know, roughly a hundred fire bricks, a little bit more, times almost eight pounds. So 800 pounds or so of fire brick. Again, it goes up the back, down the center, and up the front, touching every brick so every brick gets hot. Now, you, you know, you can't, just from fire starters, it's not enough to warm up the stove. I mean, the, the, the bricks aren't getting hot just from this. But I can't, you know, in the garage, I can't do more than this. I just wanted to show you the draft. And what you would do if you kept, you know, somebody might say that this, this fire box is tiny. It's only one half of one fire brick, 4.5 inches across. Well, you know, for this size stove, it's more than adequate. But you could build it up another brick. Keep the, you would keep the distance the same because there's a lot of advantages to the amateur builder building one brick full and one half, not going any wider than that. I'll show you later why that's so advantageous to an easy build. But you could go up another brick, and make, you, making the firebox tall, then stack the, the wood on top of each other. You'd have all sorts of air gaps. And preferably what you would do is once you get this thing roaring, if you were really using it to heat your home, you would then do an, an outside air um, duct. And basically make some sort of door or some sort of aluminum a door you would insert here with a tube and feed it the outside air so it doesn't steal air from your house. Basically, would you basically get something like this, but smaller, um, and an aluminum square, like say this was the aluminum square that would fit right over top, and say this part had a hole cut out for the circle with the, the, the hose, you just feed it, you'd feed it outside air. The problem with any rocket stove in the house like this is it just, if it's open or a J-tube design, it steals a tremendous amount of heat and air from the house. You want to feed it outside air whenever possible. I know someone said, well that keeps burn temperatures down, well so what? I mean the whole, the po point is so it doesn't steal heat and air from your house. Take it from the outside and then it's just a pure heat radiation device. Um, fires here, hot gases run along the bottom, they come straight up, basically like it's a rocket stove up until about here. So the draw is very aggressive, slams against the top 
of these bricks, but then per the, the Russian uh, stove design, that I don't who, who knows how many hundreds of years they've been doing this over there, it then hits a wall here, curves down, the hot gases then flow down they, to the bottom. They don't, this is the burn chamber, they flow to here, but the big ones stay hot for 15 hours. I mean, if you, some of them are, I, I don't know, you know, 7,000 pounds or, I mean, this is tiny. This is about the smallest, quote, Russian stove. So it comes in here, slams the top. There's no mortar here. I'm going to break this down and try a different configuration in a few days. Winds down and then up. And I'll show you, I'll show you um, what the inside looks like as I pull it apart. And then I'll also show you, if anybody wants to build it, I'll show you the, uh, the, the, the same stove, but in like little mini bricks, so you can follow the steps. People in, you just say, our community like to prep, prepare for an extended power outage or a oil embargo. Who knows, right? I mean, all you need to do, you'll never be cold. Um, I don't know. I'll, we'll count the bricks later. 105. 110 or 115 fire bricks and um, doesn't need any mortar but you would if you were using it in your house for a few weeks you would use I'll tell you about that later kind of a mud and clay mortar a temporary mortar doesn't need much of a chimney I mean this is not approved this is just some piece of crap four inch dryer vent let me show it to you just held down by bricks you can get a high temperature uh, tube of uh, you know fireplace mortar caulk and you just get a piece of metal you cut it out with snips a circle smaller than this four inch tube this is just a piece of dryer vent it's not stove pipe or anything it's warm already it's enough to draw it up and out it does it just stove pipe gets a little bit hot it's enough to draw it up and out um, you might get some smoking a bit until once everything warms up to temperature in any stove the draw starts increasing where you have no problem so I'm not going to take this off because it's still burning, but it's, I mean, literally, if you were in a prep situation and you have three or four weeks in January without electric, you smack this thing together, I'll show you exactly how to build it. It looks like hell because I didn't make all the cuts. I could make this look as, as nice as I want. could veneer it on the outside. It would look beautiful. It just looks like hell now, I know, but in a prep situation, who cares? Slap it together with some basic mortar, some mud, some clay. Um, you've seen even what I've done here. My build was pretty lame. I stuffed some of the holes with um, mineral wool. Uh, Roxol is a, is a name brand. But any sort of mineral wool does not burn. Um, it's, you can actually throw it in a flame and it will never burn. Um, and any sort of regular insulation, never use it. It'll melt down or burn. It's very dangerous. So you just slap it together and you slap your stovepipe together in a prep situation. You run it out a window. You seal everything up and you're good to go. You have heat um, for as long as you need it. Just by storing 105 to 110 bricks. Guys, I was thinking about whether to use mortar in a prep situation. If you needed to go three weeks with something like this, I don't think I would even use mortar. I really don't. Because yeah, as you lay the brick, you get some you get some seams, you know, like that, and it just happens. But fire bricks, the way they're cut, they're usually cut where each one is almost exactly the same as the other. So if you lay them properly, you have very few seams. You can fill, fill your seams with this mineral wool. Again, you could toss this in a you know, campfire. It just does not burn. That's what it's made for. And, I would, and as the stove gets hot, the draw is more aggressive. The draw wants the fire and the um, smoke and the hot gases want to come out the chimney. They want to move through least resistance. They don't want to move through tiny little seams. So as this thing gets hot, you're not going to get anything coming out of seams. When I've, I've, I've you know, done this a few times where, like, this one's probably almost out, what we were looking at before. Yeah, where I've thrown some sticks in there that smoke, and when it gets real cold, the smoke does start to pour out all the seams. But when it's hot, it doesn't. And then you could just simply get something like this, a mineral wool, and like I've done here, few places shove the mineral wool in the seams and you'd have a little bit of smoking when you light it up or, or get it from cold to hot but I, I don't I, you know you could also stack the bricks up and get your 
some sort of high heat mortar that goes in a caulk gun and just fill the seams with that and that's easy enough to you know break down with a rubber mallet when you're finished after you, you know, your prep situation is over if you had to again you you would mix some I don't know you just dig some dirt and some clay up sift it the best you can mix it uh, you know I don't know what would be three to three to one uh, sand to clay and that would be or basically mud three to one sand to mud would be a temporary mortar too you just break it down when your prep situation's over I mean you don't want to mortar it because then it hardens up and when you break it down you, you break your, your bricks apart you lose all your money to build these or any rocket stove really or any hybrid like we're trying to do here Russian rocket stove you can use any brick that basket weaves that is cut uh, milled exactly the same to each other so not every brick does this you know you, you lay two down next to each other and you bring your third and put it on top and it should be exact if it's exact you can build a lot with that with very few cuts just by stacking bricks um, but not every brick does this and bricks even that do this there's sometimes I don't know what you call it, the tolerances or the way they're made then you'll you'll try you know make this pattern with five or ten or fifteen different bricks all different combinations then you'll, you'll say oh this is great then you'll get it you'll go into the stack again and you'll put one on top and it'll be it'll be off by like that much you can't work with that as a mess you have to find a brick or a paver where the manufacturer gets those bricks exactly the same and trust me they're not always exactly the same this is critical or you won't be able to, to just stack and make your own stove in terms of what I was just talking about fire bricks are so good for stacking at 9 by 4.5 by 2.5 that a brick up and down is the same size as two on the side even though you can basket weave these I doubt it'll do it we'll see but most bricks won't two on top well, I hope so make my life easier when I build my stove yeah it does wow that makes my life easy well you can tell by the you know just the lengths and widths but I didn't know yeah well let me show you from the other side not every brick does this guys just don't go buy in a couple hundred bricks you gotta make these patterns make sure everything lines up then you're just it's easy you're golden when you go to make the damn stove if it does this sort of thing right, let's start breaking it down this is unreal secure yeah jury rigged <laughs> not do not try at home look at this piece of shit all right see that just just glued on Okay, now obviously this is the permanent stove in my house. I don't use this this sort of thing. I'll show you the double walled stove pipe later you can build. So we get the sorry guys, this is not a professional production. Here's your chimney. The Russians say a canal for canal. Canale. And there's a canal. You can see the canal. So it's you, know, you follow the light. Fire goes in there, it runs along the bottom, hits the back wall, like it's built at this point built just like a rocket stove, a J design. Comes all the way up, slams against the top, forced over, hits another wall, which I'll show you as we break it down. The hot gases are forced to the bottom, again through a barrier, and then up and out the top of the pipe. So these stoves, um, this type of Russian stove, I call it, it's not like the Knetsov flow of free gases, it's the way the Russian stoves have always been for hundreds of years. I call it a locomotive on two sides. The, the heat of the fire is the locomotive on one end that pushes everything, and the locomotive on the other end is the chimney. A piece of chimney, the chimney will pull, will draw everything through. It's just as important as the strength of the fire, in fact it's way more important. A piece of crap chimney that's not insulated like this won't pull much, won't draw, unless it gets super hot. If you insulate your chimney and make ch the chimney part of the entire system, it will pull, it will draw like a locom I call it locomotive on both ends. So let's break it down. Okay, I removed the cap. 
So again, just to get your orientation, the wood is burned here, runs along the bottom. Hot gases run up to the top, they hit this cap here. So here's your, here's your first canal. And the gases are coming right up at us. And then they would pass over that middle wall down here and then up. So I'll, I'll open it up a lot now so you can see. Okay, some more bricks apart. The chimney is here, disassembled. Here's your chimney. So I don't know what you can really see there, guys, but there is that. There's two walls that, that snake the hot gases through. There it is. Obviously the basics here is not my design, guys. I mean, they've been doing this in Russia for, I don't know, 500 years. I'll show you the, the video where I got the basic design from. My, my add-on design is to build the rocket stove, like I've done here to a degree, inside the Russian stove design, which the Russians are not building. They're not, I don't, you know, maybe it's tradition. They're not taking advantage of the amazing draw of a rocket stove. They're not doing that. So that is my uh, idea. And I'm going to try to combine the rocket stove, say botch ba botch backs, batch box type stove, but with your basic J design with a Russian concept. If they merge together, I'm, I haven't, you know, I've spent a lot of time online, guys. I haven't seen anybody that's done that. So anyway, again, the basics though. It's not, you know, this is not my design. Um, okay, the well, just to give you an orientation, fire burns there, goes down the bottom, comes up this canal first on the right hits the remember there's bricks at the top so it would hit that ceiling and then it curves down here the key is I hope you can see this underneath well there underneath those bricks is another gap where the bricks I mean where the uh, gases can can get underneath the bricks and then finally come up this canal so here the gap is on top and here the gap is at the bottom. The idea is behind all these stoves is um, the hot gases touch as many bricks as possible which is your um, your mass, mass of, of weight that heats up and then stays hot sometimes for hours after the fire is out. The whole principle behind all of this is the opposite of you know a North American style um, iron or metal stove it only works when things are being burned in it and it cools instantly. These things, just like a masonry heater, they stay hot for a long time. They come up here, they slam the top, they're forced here. Per this wall here, they are forced down. It's just your classic Russian stove snake style. And then there's a gap there, so the, the gas is passed underneath this wall, slamming the top of the burn chamber, and then finally come up here and out. And um, this thing, the way it's designed and how small it is and how warm these, how hot these refractory bricks get of the, of the uh, fire brick, it'll draw like crazy with hardly, you know, I mean you could just, most times you cannot just take a little four inch flex pipe and run it out the window. I mean, that's not going to be enough draw in the chimney, but th this thing will draw like crazy. It has a little bit of a rocket stove in it. Um, you know, the idea with these, with these, I don't know, five or seven thousand pound Russian stoves, five to ten times the size of this, the idea is to, you pass as many hot gases around, but you can't lose your energy. You can't lose your it's not momentum as much as energy to draft out the chimney. If you lose your energy, it'll stall out and you'll smoke your house up. You always want to err on it getting out. I mean, you can't put too many twists and turns for the hot gases. Now, this is no problem. I mean, this thing, you know, it draws so aggressively. It would, you know, you don't, you don't need any sort of chimney. Just a little flex thing out the window. That's why this is really the perfect prep stove. Um, like in a, if you have a basement, you live in the northeast, you just you just build this thing thing in front of your basement window. You run a little pipe out the, you know, you, you pop the window out, you put a piece of cement board in. Because we're, see, it's, it's winding up and down so many times and the brick is absorbing so much energy. 
you know, when it comes out, or at least if the stove is built more permanent, the idea is it only, what are the degrees they call for? Um, minimum, I've heard people say 120 degrees, but you know, you want to air on 120 to 150 degrees. If it's less than that, you'll, your gases will stall out. And, you know, you build the whole thing for nothing. You smoke your house out. Your wife's not happy. Okay, one last time. These sticks are burned. They come in from the left there along the bottom. They run along the bottom. I'll do it with my hand this time. They come up the first channel. They slam the top of the hood. They go down this channel. And then here you, you can go under here. So you can, I can put my hand under here. And then they come up the chimney and out. Sorry, I could do better there. I'll get, by the way, you know, I, I just, I probably mentioned this already in the video, but I will show you exactly how to build this with mini bricks step by step. You don't have to worry about it now if you're interested in doing this or keeping the plans on hand for a prep. Okay, so this is the core. Um, there's four rows stacked normally flat. And then the top piece, when you start to form your burn chamber, you're not your burn chamber, you start to form your chimney going up, you turn the bricks on the side. So it's simply six bricks as the base going all the way up. And of course, you know, the way these fire bricks are cut, they stack perfectly. You cannot combine bricks. I mean, it's just, you can if you want to make 50 cuts and you're an expert at cutting brick and you know what you're doing. But once you start with a certain brick, you have to stick with it, at least for these mini stoves. Unless, again, you can, you can cut anything to make any size if you want to spend time. This is just, this is a stove you could, if you knew what you were doing, you know, in a prep situation, you could put this together in 30 minutes and have heat. So the, the top of the burn chamber, you see, is capped off. It's all solid brick until you get, you start your first canal where you open up the end. And you just continue up with these bricks laid on their side. These are all flat. These gets harder to stack, but these darn fire bricks are so perfectly cut and they're so big, you know, you stack them up no problem without mortar. One other great advantage of these fire bricks, how they all fit together, when you make your canals and it's you know, perfectly square like that. You make your canals a regular fire brick without any cuts. It goes right down in the middle. Make your canals like that for the most part. Fits perfectly in between. No cuts, nothing. Now, for the gases to flow underneath, you know, initially you have to you have to raise you have to raise it up so the gases can uh, can get under. But after you do your initial brick, you might just I might have decided to do that with the first one. Let's keep breaking it down. So that's, here's your core, that's it. And the beauty of this is it all goes together with no cuts except that one piece is a half. Now why are your bricks all black and beaten up? Because I've used these in so many different configurations, playing around with rocket stoves and things like that. Just I've, I've used them a lot. I've even moored them to a degree and had to rip the mortar off some of them. Not, I knew I'd break it down eventually, so I didn't use a lot, but there, these bricks are beaten up. Um, so there's your core. That's it. Whoops. A little ladder accident. There's your core. Now these bricks, this is, you know, um, you just laying this across the side, supported by this, which I don't, you know, that doesn't, didn't make me feel too, too confident, building all that weight on top. So. There was some room on the outside. I just stacked some stuff on the outside to hold that, hold that down. See, it could, it could tip in. Well, I don't think there's probably any chance it could tip in anyway. There's your core. And as the Russians, there's your first canal. Well, I might as well show you the half. So you know, there you go. And you can cut these things if you're patient and slow on a real cheap wet saw, tile wet saw. Okay, this is the burn chamber without the, the cap. So it's just your base layer. One, two, three, four. And when you stack these up on your own, always always mix it up. Never put, if, you, if you're gonna have a half, have your half like this under the hole. 
um, you, you don't want bricks to be on top of each other. You want it. You want to that are the same. You want to uh, change the configuration. So here you have up and over. So I bet there's something different here. See, that would be different. You have over and up underneath. Um, any sort of changing up in the configuration adds strength, especially if you have no mortar and it's temporary. Never just stack them the same. Like, okay, that's that. Stack that one on top the same. Stack that one on top the same. No, this, this, you're changing configuration whenever possible adds strength. Believe it or not, this is the base of the stove. That's it. Nine bricks. And you could go up you could go up four feet higher than I did if you had a little mortar. Um, you could add, easily add another 100 or 200 pounds that would hold heat and throw out more heat once you get the whole thing hot. I mean, it's just a piece of cake if you have bricks that are symmetrical. And you keep it to one long and one across. That's it. And some might say, well, that's not wide enough. I want to add this. I want to, you know, then, or I want to add this. My halves are in the way. I want to add this. Okay, then you better you better know what you're doing in terms of stove making cuts. Once you do that, it does not come together. Trust me, it's too hard to explain. Once you get away from one, this is for amateurs. This is not for professionals. This is to help, you know, this is to help potentially thousands of people that want a backup heat source. Um, once you, you have one across, one, one down. Here, once you get away from the, this basic, it's, you really need to know what you're doing. You need to have the tools, and that's not what the point of this video recommendation is. Well, yeah, that creates a, a firebox that's too small. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. There you go, you done. your base is done. You start stacking up around the side. Like that, you leave this open. Whatever kind of wood you can shove in there. And if, if it's too narrow for you, just... Well, again, you want to you offset you with your halves. You don't want to go right on top. You go up higher. Go up this high. You have 12, 8, you can take 12, 18 inches. Firebox can be huge in terms of going up. And then all the sticks lay on top of each other. This air goes everywhere. The thing would be a foundry. It would be a damn furnace. So uh, that's another thing. I don't, I don't, I've never seen anybody put together a stove where the firebox is incredibly thin and goes up very high. And I'm going to try that. I can't try it here. I would love to have created the foundry here, but I'm in my garage and it's obviously it's not safe. Okay, so this is the stove. I did stack rows of 10, so it's easy, although the top one's only 9. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 rows of 10 less 1, 79 fire bricks. And here are your halves, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 79 fire bricks and 10 halves. So to be safe, depending on your configuration, I, you know, if I had to put it together again, it wouldn't go exactly the same. I, I don't know why. Um, so, um, 85 fire bricks plus 12 halves. Just store that somewhere just like that. You'll never be without heat as long as you have your, you know, your makeshift stove pipe and something you can run out a window or some mineral wool insulation and, um, you know, some caps or whatever you need, some cement board. That's it. Never be cold as long as you have need wood, I guess. Downtown Chicago is not great. If you find some dry wood, if something happened. Also, this is incredibly heavy. I don't know how much these are, but, oh gosh, it's got to be, it's got to be, I don't know, nine pounds or eight or nine pounds, probably just under 10 each. So the mass of that, I mean, just gets so hot and it radiates out forever. Here's my stack of bricks for my winter project. We get shut in all winter with me having nothing to do. Um, we'll say this is a present from, we'll just say K and A. Um, not a bad deal. Brick, bricks are still a decent deal. All building materials are through the roof. Uh, plywood, three-quarter inch exterior plywood is over $50 a sheet. I mean, 
Um, this is a, it's not a 4 by 8 it's a little bit less I think, it's a paver. Uh, it is a shale paver, um, $1.20 at a brickyard. And um, I'm going to build the stove with this. Um, you can see, can you tell which brick I baked in my wood stove to make sure it could hold up to a thousand degrees? Uh, yeah, that one, and it held up perfectly. So, um, yeah, you, you want to use fire brick whenever possible. But, uh, what, $2.40 to $2.50 per brick? Like at Lowe's or Home Depot, it's going to be more than that. At a brickyard, you can get it about two forty, two fifty, two sixty a brick. Um, I don't know. I baked it. I baked it at a thousand degrees for five hours, and there was not one. So I mean, it's going to break down if I, you know, this stove. I'm going to build it just to see if I could build it. Am I going to use it in my house? My, you know, my, if anything would happen, my insurance company would cover it. No, I'm going to, you know, it's not going to get heavy use. But at a dollar. Whatever, a dollar twenty-five a brick. I'm gonna. I figured I'd buy the bricks up. I can always use them somewhere else around the house. My chimney's up up in the up in the roof's disintegrating. I'm gonna have to rebuild that at some point. So you can. I would. I would say, for medium to light use, you can use clay and shale pavers. You don't need the fire brick, but if you can afford it, that is better. Okay, guys. This is how to build the stove. This was also a gift. Thank you from K and A. These things are almost as expensive <laughs> as regular bricks. So thank you, K&A. Um, all right, guys. It's just the base is just nine bricks. Remember the key to all these stoves, any amateur Russian stove with a rocket design is is the, just this: one up, one over. That's it. No wider, or you run into problems. So I'm going to stack for you, and I'm going to tell. I can't do this and hold the camera and it would take forever anyway so I'm just going to take a picture of each layer and level uh, each layer and level and um, you just follow along like that one thing as I do the layers this is layer two I mean watch out for the halves there is, are going to be halves remember in the design in the garage there was ten total I'm not sure I'm going to do it exactly the same way so just make sure you look out for these halves here it's hard to tell in the picture Okay, level five is when you start capping it off. You start making the foundation here for your rocket stove chimney that will go up. You know, your sticks go in here. Again, if it's too skinny for you, just add another layer before you cap it up. Simply repeat layer four uh, another time. Give you enough room. I think this is plenty, though, if you're going to use small sticks. Now we start, once it's capped off, these are all laid flat. Now we start going on the side. Alright guys, this is getting a little too hard for me to stack. When, once they go on their end like that, uh, without any kind of glue or mortar. So this is no longer five. It's row six, where you start to put them on their side. Alright? Row six is where you start to put them on their side. And this row six is not done, because with symmetrical bricks, if I can get this in there, this starts the first wall. So you're, you're burning in here, goes along the bottom and starts to come up that canal. So you're going to basically, as you lay, you're going to, the, the first wall is a brick on its side that fits between these two. So see, it's, it's kind of perfect as you continue up, and I'll, I'll draw these plans out. You draw, you're making a chimney, your first chimney inside the stove. So and you keep laying, laying on the side. So as you come up, you're going to do something like that. See? Okay, I'll draw the plants out exactly. Okay, now for the canal down, you're going to have a canal down here basically, but it's not going to lay on the burn. It's not going to lay on the firebox roof because there's no way for the. It needs to be up in the air a bit. Can't lay down. It needs to be up like this. So the gases can come up here, can come up here, and go down, underneath, and then up. So this layer has to be up about here. So there's no way to float a brick in midair. So you pretty much have to do 
you have to start it going across which creates halves you put that one across and you could continue to stack in between going up like that I'll have it all planned out for you this is the, about the most I can stack so um, pretty simple hope the plans make sense will be at the end now fire brick is larger than almost any brick you'll, or paver you'll buy and somebody, many would say, this, this uh, firebox is too skinny even with fire brick. It's half of a fire brick, so it's 4.5. Um, I still would go half of, of a paver, even if, it, your, even if your burn chamber here goes down to just about four. Um, and I would just go higher. I would then go up two or three more rows. So your firebox would be extremely narrow yet high. You know, so you, actually, it's, I think that, that design is better. You throw your sticks in, you've got a lot of room in, with the ceiling, you, everything piles on top of each other, creates tons of air spaces all throughout. And the point is, for uh, any amateur or prep situation, we're going to build all of our stoves, well, the way I'm going to recommend for you guys, I mean, this is all for people learning, it's going to be one full brick across and one brick down. That's all the width that the stove's going to be. With this width, and I'll show you in the other bricks, there's so many different combinations you can build on your own by yourself without having to be a Russian stove master. So it looks like nothing. It's like you're gonna, what the heck? This is the, gonna be the stove? One across and one down, one across and one down on the side. That's it. That is it. And this one comes inside. You say that's the damn width of the, of the burn chamber? Yes. Absolutely. If you go up high enough, you got plenty of room to put your sticks in. You can put a lot in if you go up high enough. If you do this configuration, one across and one down, there's so many different Russian stoves you can build being an absolute amateur without knowing any bit of what you're doing and almost, well, not no cuts, but very, very few cuts. Don't need uh, big wet saws or, or all, you just, piece of cake, you'll have maybe eight cuts that's it if you build like this and you know I think if you so I know it's gonna be ridiculous to many of you guys but that's it that's that's for the width that's the width of the firebox it's about four inches or just over four inches and these pavers are big I mean you could you, if you had to get clay bricks that are smaller your firebox would be even smaller now <laughs> that, that at anything less than this you are getting a bit too small but again um, you know, you just have to trade off. If you're not an expert, you have to trade off. This design uh, allows you to do a lot of things. And when this is all said and done, I'm going to test it out. The high fire box makes up for a lot. Why does it have to be wide? You know, st stack thin sticks and, and logs on top of each other. Even if you've got to go 12 to 16 inches up in the air, I think that'd be just fine. Okay, this is the main principle in building this stove. I'm doing it with these pavers. It's not going to work out as perfectly as using the fire brick. The, the layer that is on the ground here is layer 5. Um, the layer on top of it is layer 6. And this one sticking up is included in layer 6. Don't mind that one sticking out. That's just a half brick. I didn't cut it. You know, it, it would be cut off. That's, that's your only half for layer 5. Layer 6 includes this. So. The burn would be, the fire would be up here, would come through, and this would be your chimney. And this would come up. Now as it comes up, you want to create a, a wall. Um, this, what works out with these bricks that basket weave, is you create layer six like this, and you just put one right down the middle and it fits perfectly. So you see this is going to create your chimney coming up here. Put one on the side. Put one on the side. I'm not doing the layers now. This is basically, and you would need a half in here. And then you just keep going. Put one on the side. And then, of course, this is your, your you're building your, your uh, gases are going to come up here and they're going to slam against the roof. Now, to make this stove work, you need, you can't just drop this one to the bottom. You cannot do that because the gases have come up and then they have to come down it to the bottom and then go through 
and up. So you have to create a cha an air chamber down there for the gases to get through. So your first brick has to be a, has to be side for support. Now that creates problems if you don't have a wet saw. You might you might need a half here. You probably need less than a half. Less than a half here and a full brick across. Now once ever sorry this is horrible camera work guys tough. Once everything's built up, okay. And once you start building your, basically you're building two chimneys next to each other. You get another brick. Now as you come up here, then you can, now you can start going on the side. You can start going long ways. Like that. So again, your fire starts down here, races across, across the bottom. This, this layer here is not the bottom of the stove. I'm just showing you, this is the top of the burn chamber. I'm not showing you the whole stove. Your gases come up here, they hit a wall, the, the cap, they're then forced in, down the middle, and then remember since we put that brick across, there's, a, there's air space down here, see, see the light? The gases would go underneath here, and then come up here, this is the chimney. The chimney is on the same side of the stove as where the wood goes in, in this design. So, guys, you could, you can, it depends how many bricks you have. You just, you could take this up as high as you can, as you could, depending on how many bricks you had. And again, these halves you had to cut here. Once, once you get past this one layer, it's no more halves. Well, there might be a few. That's mostly just stacking bricks. This, the paver, um, using the pavers here is not working out as perfectly as using the fire bricks. So the, these pavers for this type of stove is creating a little bit more of a problem, but you can do it with any sort of brick that basket weaves. Um, I hope that made sense. I'll try to add to that uh, with different pictures to help you out. Okay, guys, this is Vladimir. A link in the description, but it's all in Russian, so the bad we can I can talk over it. There's your first layer. Um, it goes pretty quickly, guys. I'll tell you when he's building. He's building up the second layer now. Just goes around the outer edge, building up the third layer, which is the same as the second. I believe he's still in third layer. That gaps in the middle. Finishing third layer, gap in the middle where his hand is, where the fire goes. He's using just a like a clay mud mortar temporary. I'm sure the bricks break down. It's not a permanent thing. He's just testing this design out. goes a lot more quickly than this guy's once it starts going I think <laughs> it does it does and then it starts moving really quickly and I'll have to really try to guide you through the layers as it as it moves quickly don't mind that metal box that was shown for a split second. He didn't use it. I don't know why it's in there. He decided it, it's for stacking bricks. He didn't use it. Um, this is probably layer uh, five he's building now. Where his knee is, where the wood goes in, he's covered it over with the first brick. He's covered that first, his burn chamber is where his foot is. And he's covered it over with the first brick. Continues to work around the outside. Okay, this is layer five, where he's he's capping off. He's making a roof over his burn chamber. He'll leave the back square open for the chimney to start. Layer six starts bricks on the side, so it's it's a little bit inside and they're on the side. Now is layer seven. He's starting to build that first channel up, creating that box around the first chimney. There, the brick in the middle there, squeezed, is on its side, remember? There's that brick across that creates the second wall for the second channel. He's not building his chimney yet, guys. He's just lining the bricks up. Okay, there, there's the brick across that we looked at. There, he's showing you there the gas movement. And um, you just basically keep going around the outside with those two channels in the middle being built. The chimney will be to your right where his hand is now. 
the chimney is again over where you place the sticks. It's the same side. It does create a problem if anybody wanted to run this up into their fireplace. We'll do a question and answer at the end of this video. There are modifications you can make. But I'll show you the main part we're going to stick with this. I'm going to show you how he caps it off. Still going up around the outside, continuing the two channels in the middle to guide the gases in a snake-like fashion. I just want to show you how he caps it off. Gases come up, they go down, they go under that channel you can see, and then up the chimney he hasn't built yet. Now, okay, he's capping it off. Again, you have to put a roof on it, just like that. Have to put a roof on it. I think he puts a double roof. I mean, the more bricks you can use, the more mass you can create, the more it will heat up and store heat. And then he's there's just your basic square that I had similar. He's got a little better chimney <laughs> than I had. Um, it's a more a real chimney connector. He'll go bricks right on top of that and build the chimney up with bricks for a few. Again, it'll be best if you have, you know, get an extra 30, 40 bricks if you can. You can go higher. You can go thicker layers you can add mass you can your chimney can be built up a bit not like that two cent chimney that i had if you have a little more time and money there's a lot you can do with this even making a permanent stove it would be an incredible permanent stove we'll do that we'll talk about that in the questions and answers if you want as well this is he was just showing you how to make a more permanent chimney cap. You could do this yourself kind of the way I did it. Eventually it's not going to go up brick forever. It will be stovepipe through the through the ceiling. So he's starting his metal stovepipe there. And it looks to be it does look to be a four inch pipe guys. Not a regular stovepipe you buy at Lowe's or whatever is six inch around. I think four inch works for this uh, which is I don't, you know, I don't even know if they have four-inch stovepipe. It, you might have to use dryer vent. Um, you know, that's not what you want to use if you're going to make this thing permanent and use it a lot. But it probably exists somewhere. Or four-inch stainless steel pipe would work. That wouldn't break down in high heat. Dryer vent would break down. I mean, that's you don't want that. And he's almost done here. He's just using a clay and sand mortar. I'm sure. This thing could dry for a few weeks. He's just messing around with different designs. He'll break it down and not harm the bricks in any way. Connect it up to the chimney coming down. He's in business. Pop the vodka, dude. He's in business. Well, that's not that's not exactly the greatest <laughs> roof he's going out there. But, um, yeah, I'd like to thank this. This guy shares a lot of knowledge. Uh, most of them... Do not. I wanted to show you this. Anybody building this permanently, uh, he has built a clean out, and the simplest way to do it is what he's done there. So there's your burn chamber. In his design, he has two layers of ceiling above the burn chamber to save bricks or in a prep situation. I only put one. Any layer, extra layer of mess is better, adds uh, to the heat it gives off once the fire goes out. But there's that brick sticking out that's just a square half sticking out. And in my design, I laid a brick, a full brick across. I did, this is a clean-out uh, section. So the next day, after it burns for five hours, he could just slide that half little square out and be able to go in and access at least the final channel, get a shop vac in there, clean out all the silt or whatever. Um, you know, you don't need a door. They, Russian stoves and everything, they'll put a door. You don't need a door. Just create a half brick. And um, you just pull the half brick out. Of course, that's the one brick you would not mortar. Any smoke ever comes out, stuff it with mineral wool. 
Okay, let's do a quick question and answer before I give you the exact plans or with the plans that I drew up. Um, that what he does here is, is actually much simpler than the plans as he presents them. So I'm going to do a video showing you the exact plans for at, at the end for those that want to build it. But the question somebody might ask, what about, um, can I do this, you know, in an emergency anywhere? Well, you have to consider floor weight. Um, I don't know what kind of bricks you're going to be using. Fire bricks are almost 10 pounds each. It's a lot of weight on an old wooden floor. I mean, you have to be careful in that regard. Uh, floor weight is an issue. Now, this stove is small enough. What I built in my garage, what he's done here, most floors are going to be able to, you know, think, could three big men at 250 pounds stand next to each other in a party? Sure. I mean, it's going to be fun. Just, just keep it into consideration. Um, a regular Russian stove or masonry stove, you have to support it underneath. But this, just small enough where, you know, you should be good. Just make sure you keep it as a consideration. Somebody might say, well, the, I, how do I run this into my fireplace? The, the best prep situation would be to build something like this and to run it into the fireplace. Yeah, no doubt. that we That's going to take a while to talk about. We'll talk about that on the back end. This design, of course, will not work in front of a fireplace. You can't wind the, the stovepipe then up and then back down and then up the fire. It, you can do some configuration changes where you could build some brick mass in front of your fireplace as a prep situation. So we'll come back to that. Um, let's see. Chimney. What chimney to use? Um, again, this thing's going to draw so well that you could, any basic metal four inch stove pipe, you could run out a window in an emergency. Guys, obviously for, I have to tell you, it violates all code. Your insurance company won't cover you. Don't ever do this. Don't, I'm, I'm just, don't ever do anything I'm ever saying in this video. I have to say all that bull crap. Okay. We got that out of the way. Don't do anything I ever said here. <clears throat> now, if you, that's not a great draw situation to have a, you know, just a thin little metal pipe running a few feet out the window. The longer your chimney can be, the more it will suck, the more it will draw. Not suck bad. The more you, what you want, the more it will draw and suck. And a thermally insulated chimney is always better. So again, this mineral wool is sold at, I think Lowe's and Home Depot always will have some sort of mineral wool. It's good to keep on hand. If you wrapped a regular BS chimney, four inch uh, dryer vent pipe or a four inch metal pipe thin, if you wrapped it with mineral wool, it would become insulated and that chimney would, would pull. You might not need it in this stove. It's, it, it's part rocket stove. It's going to draw like crazy anyway. But I would, if I was going to sit, sit this up for a prep situation, I would have a, like a little tiny box of mineral wool or, well, they don't come in tiny little boxes, but whatever the minimum roll would be or however they sell it at Lowe's and Home Depot. And the, you'd want to wrap that mineral wool around that stovepipe a lot if you had to run it out a window to protect your house and never do what I'm saying. Um, okay, so that's the chimney discussion. You could basically use anything that could guide the smoke as long as it's, well, that could hold up to a decent amount of heat, any sort of metal wrapped in mineral wool. Okay, stovepipe. Most of stovepipe that's sold in any chimney shop, Lowe's sells black stovepipe. Home Depot uh, does not. In my every, every time I've checked, Home Depot does not. It's almost always six-inch pipe. It just comes flat. You have to roll it around yourself. It's a real pain in the ass. Roll it around and connect it. Six inch pipe is if you, in an emergency, sure, but it's not going to work. He, it's this, a four inch pipe, which means, you know, dryer vent. Some dryer vent is, I think it's called galvanized. That's kind of, if it gets hot, the fumes, dangerous fumes can come off galvanized. So people that have used dryer vent, they take it outside and they burn it hot outside to take that layer off. You have to be careful, but you, four inch pipe, uh, you know, any kind of four inch pipe, you could pack it with mud if you had to. You don't have to be exact in a prep situation, guys. You could pack it with mud, whatever you had out back, it would hold. You could pack the, the seams. We talked about using mineral wool. If smoke started to come out of the seams, you could pack mud in the seams in a prep situation. But again, at, when this thing gets hot, the smoke won't come out the seams. If you build it and it starts smoking right off the bat, relax, let it get hot for a minute or two, then it'll stop. 
Okay, the last thing I wrote here before we go back to the putting it in front of a fireplace discussion is the mortar discussion. Okay, prep. Oh, we might not have electricity for two to three weeks or whatever. I, I wouldn't put any mortar on at all. I would stack the bricks, build it. I would use minerals to stuff the cracks. I probably would keep a caulk gun with the high heat mortar. Uh, if you Maybe you could fill some gaps with that. Um, you could, again, mud, just regular mud, you know. So if you if you use mortar, or high heat mortar to fill cracks, you could, you know, when you break the thing down and put it away, you're going to break the bricks apart. So if you have some gaps, there's a lot of ways to deal with it. If you're building this, the mortar discussion, if you're building this like permanently, and, you know, you have a basement and you're, it's a cement slab and you just say, you know, I want to build this thing for permanently. I might never use it, but you'd want to use, there's two options. If it's going to be absolutely permanent and you don't care whenever you break it down or sell the house, the bricks get all cracked apart, you'd use uh, high heat mortar. Um, there's a lot. You can just search it on Amazon up to 2,000, 2,200, 2,300 degrees, high heat mortar. Just mix it with water like any you know, quick crete. It's not a concrete. There's no aggregate in it. It's easy to work with. Um, that, that works and that's all you would need. You don't, and, but, and if you're going to use it and really bake this thing up to a thousand degrees, you'd want to use a high heat mortar. If you're going to use it and bake this thing up more than a prep situation and it's going to get hot, if you use fire brick, you could bake the heck out of this thing. I mean, if you have a safe place to do it, um, outside, of course, you could push it, you know, push that firebox to over a thousand, thousand degrees. And if you use regular mortar, you know, type S mortar, whatever. It's sold in Lowe's, Home Depot, type N. It's not going to hold up for more than 20, 30, 40 burns. It, it might even crack your bricks. It expands weird. So what most people do, or the traditional way, is um, I believe it's three parts sand. The finer sand, the better, but you could use play stand, sand. Finer, the better, with one part clay, or fire clay. Now, of course, fire clay used to be $10 a bag. Now it's $140 a bag, or people are buying these fly, fire clay sinks and driving up the prices. You don't, you, if you ha, if you can get the fire clay and do one part that to three parts sand, that's that's not going to really be, it'll, it'll keep the stove together. But when you go to break it down with a rubber mallet, it'll come apart pretty easily. If you want it, the middle of the road, you, you could you, clay's in your backyard. By the way, guys, you don't. If you if you can take the aggregate out and sift it, one part clay um, to to three parts sand, you could add. You want it middle of the road. Add then one half part Portland cement, or add one half part um, type S or N or whatever mortar type M mortar. And then it would bind it together better. But when you go to break it down, the bricks should come apart without breaking the bricks apart and you wasting your money. So there's a lot of options. For prep, two weeks, I wouldn't do anything. i just stack the bricks as perfectly as I could and fill the gaps with rat turds or whatever you, whatever you had on hand for a few weeks. It'll work. Last discussion is putting it in front of a fireplace. Um, if somebody might say, well, it would be beneficial if the stovepipe came out the back, not over where I put in the sticks. I think that's an easy fix. That it would be like a, a, you know, another, quote, Russian bell style. You create like a bell on top of a bell. Basically, you'd create the, exactly what's here. And then, or you want, you want the stovepipe to come out the back, if that would help you. You would just create one more channel, you know, like we did in layer six or layer all the way up you did the channel all the way up all the way around the outside you would you wouldn't have your stovepipe in there you would just have the gases come up and you'd put one more little channel cap on it and run it's hard to describe if you don't know what i'm talking about i know you just run it to the back um, it really would not be that hard um, to just do one more mini bell the last question, and maybe the most important question to a lot of people is, how many millions of people in North America have a fireplace and they may need a, you know, a temporary stove if they're not going to have electricity for two weeks? Am I saying no power? I'm getting away from that. No electricity for two weeks or whatever may happen. So again, obviously you can't have the pipe coming up five feet. To, uh, you know, the pipe has to come out low enough to get into the chimney box. And there's ways to do that using hybrids of this design. But a couple things 
guys, um, if you built just the, a mini portion of this and you ran a stovepipe from a mini portion just into your firebox, it's not going to draw properly or vent properly if your chimney is just brick going up and is not lined in some way with, st with stovepipe. So no matter what you decide to do, you'd be building a, a brick, little brick stove in front of your existing fireplace in some way to get through the two weeks, have some form of heat. And, you know, depending on what you build, it could provide a lot of heat, but you need an exhaust. He has the exhaust pipe coming out the top, of course. It would need to come out the back and it would need to come out horizontal into the firebox. Now, if you just have a regular chimney, just brick lined up, you don't have a liner or you don't have a stove pipe inside the chimney, you're going to have major draw problems. You would at least need pipe coming out of the back of whatever little mini version of this. The pipe would have to go into your fireplace and the pipe, you'd have to have some sort of pipe, a flex pipe, stove pipe, dryer vent. You'd need to run it up at least 10, 12 feet, as high as you can. It might not have to go, it might not go the full length. But don't think you can just take a pipe and put it into your fireplace and it's going to draw. It is not going to draw. It's going to smoke your house out. You can get that pipe 10, 12 feet up or preheat the chimney in some way. You'd, you'd burn a fire in your chimney. Then you get the bricks all hot. Then you start the stove, your little mini stove version. I might work on one in a different video. Then you run the pipe out the back of this stove, just two feet up out the back into your firebox. If, you're, if your chimney's already hot, then you could, if you could get that pipe to go up to three, four or five feet, then it would probably continue to draw fine. But you could have a major problem if you try to run a little pipe into your firebox of a fireplace and you got cold bricks all the way up to the roof, you can get smoked out. Um, not a good situation when you're sitting there freezing in two weeks without electricity. So basically what you would do, I'm just looking at this, if I had to, to do it, again, the fire, the, the wood goes in on our left, guys. The wood, and, uh, where the wood goes in is the same side where the chimney is. Um, to make this work in front of a fireplace, if you stored 50 or 60 or 70 bricks, you had no electricity for two weeks, you build this thing as close as possible to the entry, entry of your normal fireplace. Then at layer six starts the bricks on the side. I would forget, forget those middle channels, of course. You do layer six on the side, layer seven, as high as you could go and still have the stove pipe come out the back horizontally into your fireplace without having to go down. It can go horizontal for three feet. That's no problem. Smoke can go horizontal for three week, three three feet. Can't go down. Doesn't always have to go up. Can go horizontal for a short period of time if you can create a good draw. Of course, the longer that pipe is horizontal, you know, the more the draw has to be excellent or it will smoke back. I mean, of course, you, you want the smoke to always be rising up a bit. So you can't build the thing too high. You never, you'd have to curve the pipe down to go into your your um, chimney or into your fireplace, it's not going to work. So, for most fireplaces, whatever the height is, you probably could. Be, the first five rows here are normal bricks on their on their on their belly. Then levels uh, area or no, it's it's been a long day, guys. Um, layer six starts bricks on the side. You go up as high as you can without the middle channels. Six, seven, maybe eight. You create just like a they call it a bell, but it's it's like a bell. You ring a bell, and, it, and you, but forget the, the the ringer. You know, you're creating a, a basically a box, and you you cap off the top, of course, seal it up, and then ru run a stovepipe. You'd remove two bricks out the back, run a stovepipe horizontal directly into your firebox, and then continue that pipe as far up that chimney as you can, even if it's just dryer vent. Maybe some it only have to go five six feet. If you can't get it real high up, you got to light a fire first, get those bricks hot before you do the stove. Okay, that's that's stressed. All right, and then you know, then you don't have to be perfect. It, uh, you take some bricks out, and you just got some dryer vent pipe coming out the back. Well, pack it with mud, pack it with cob, pack it with clay, uh, pack it with quickcrete, whatever. Just seal it up any way you can with a mineral wool for the couple weeks you need it. And um, trust me, this thing, even half of this thing, be able to heat 
a few rooms in the house up uh, to a you know to a nice if it was freezing cold outside you know to a nice 50 to 60 degrees that's better sitting in your house at 25 degrees that is not fun so there is a, I'll work on it guys there is a hybrid of this and um, there should be a, a solution a brick solution for people for the millions of people that have a regular fireplace because that's I, I've known many people have been without electricity for three or four days sitting in front of a fireplace so anybody's saying what's the problem with just sitting in front of the fireplace you you've never done it it's there's this zone of like 12 inches that's comfortable if you go back 12 more inches you freeze the, the, the fireplace doesn't throw any heat to your house it takes heat away usually if you get a little too close you get singed it you a fireplace does not that you can't get through a, a two-week power uh, electricity outage with a fireplace it's an absolute nightmare you get 250 pounds of brick heated up and radiating out you got a nice 15 foot area to enjoy yourself for the two weeks until you get your electricity back anyway guys that's about it i hope some of you found that interesting we'll do once one of these every two months or so okay guys the video has been very long i'm gonna do this very quickly just pause if you need to or do screenshots your base layer layer one nine bricks each layer then it's, it's what's added on top you add you start going around the edge layer two this is a half brick whenever you see the line through that means a half brick so for layer two you lay them like this three full bricks four full five full six full and a half my drawing ability is terrible um, you know whenever it's drawn a square like this a full brick and again these are laid normally these are these are not on the side yet level th three is the same as two but for strength reverse your half make your half on this side okay you just go around the side again for level three layer four is the same as number one less two middle bricks okay the same as level one just take these two middle ones out and that's your fourth layer I'm going to say layer, not level. Why do I keep doing that? Forget my notes. Or it's going to throw you off. Forget the notes. Just go by what I'm saying here. Layer five, I call bell one. This is where you, 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 you put the ceiling on your firebox. One, two, three, four full bricks. Then down the side. Three here. Again, they're laid flat in their belly. They're not on the side yet. Layer five. Full brick back. Here's your half. Where it says OP, it's open. This is open. This is your starts your chimney up. Layer six is exactly the same as five. You don't need to do layer six. It's just adding another layer of thermal mass. If you're in a shortage of brick situation, don't need six. Seven is where you start to do the bricks on the side. So level seven, again, we'll, let's, it's it's really six if you don't do six, but we're going to call it seven. Um, this here's your base, but you're, when you're laying bricks on the side, you're going to be you're going to be inside. You're going to be a small square inside of a bigger square. So just say this is this is seven. Forget seven A and seven B. Um, seven. What we did, remember, with the there's halves here. You can do away with the halves, and you can get away without without them. What we did was full brick down. He did this half brick for a clean out. But what I recommend for a prep situation is full brick down here, two fulls, two fulls. Now, and if you can put the halves in to create a longer channel, then that is better. Because, you know, your, your gases need room to snake. I think the gases will still snake even without these two halves. So I would recommend for a prep situation, full brick top, full brick here, not the clean out. One, two, one, two, just six. Okay, eight. Level eight is, um, this is where you start your, um, well, actually I forgot something on level seven. Level seven is where you start putting in the upright brick, the brick standing up to start your channel. That's what this is. Forgot that. That's part of level seven. Start that channel going up with a brick it's wedged in between but standing upright so when you're done this level this will be higher than the surrounding 
level eight, switching hands here. My hand is falling asleep. Um, eight is one, two, three, four, all, remember on the side, two halves, one across, and these look like two halves here. This is, this is open because your, your chimney's still coming up, and this is open. It's going to be open all the way up because you're just creating channels. Now, again, if this isn't working out for you, again, I'm a little confused as to, um, you know, then don't do the halves. Just make sure you just keep your, keep the, the, um, the outside box as you go up consistent. That's all. Um, level nine, you are um, continuing to put, you're putting another brick on top of what you did in level seven, standing upright another one upright right now this the level nine here is where you, you start your other channel you put your brick across all right put it across so it's the gases are going to remember kind of come up come up they're going to come over this channel they're going to go down and remember i put my hand underneath under this one so this one has can't be on the ground it has to you have to create that that area underneath then that's you do that by going across all right this is how I drew level 10. It's like one, two, on the side still, one, two and a half, one, two and a half. Your channels are, are two channels in the middle, and that's op that square is open, that square is open, that's open, a brick at the end. Three open. Create three channels with two rows of middle bricks standing up. Okay, this one doesn't stand up because you need the strength of it, the support of it going across. Everything after this first one going across, they stand up, if you remember from the other earlier part of the video. <clears throat> All right, 11. Um, I'm not sure why he had that little one there. It's one across. I don't know. Like, it's, it's just getting a little confusing. Just continue to do what you've been doing, okay? Continue to just, just to stack on top and just keep these principles in mind okay you have to stop at some i guess at this level we stop um this this channel here coming up we stop um we stop building it up because the gases have to 13 level 13 is where you create your your uh, your roof on everything so the gases have to find a way to escape down into the center channel so you stop building you continue to build this one, but you stop. There's no bricks here, okay, for that for that channel. So the gas have to come up. They hit the roof here. They go down, and then they have to pass underneath this. 12, 13, 14, and 15. I know this is tough, guys. It's even, you know, I've been looking at this for a thousand hours, and it's not quite easy for me. This can get you started, okay? You just, you just, you'll figure it out. You use enough principles here. You know what to do. Do you know? Just just make changes on the fly. And this is this is the idea of the stove. Your sticks and and burn chambers here goes in. As I showed you several times in this video, goes up, slams against the top, down and out the chimney. So here is the the the, the diagram of the channels that you're building from a side cutout view, which I showed you in my stove as I broke it down. Here's your first channel. Now I, I played it safe. I didn't I didn't run this all the way up real high. You continue to run this up high, so you just have four or five inches here between the the ceiling, or what the Russians call the top of the bell. It's not really a bell. But I play it safe. I, I didn't want my gases to get stuck, you know, so I, I only went up this high. It gives the gases more room to snake around. Same with this. I didn't I didn't bring this all the way down to just four inches off the bot off the bent bottom but it's really the top of the firebox I started a little higher so the gases have room with this sort of draw in this sort of system I don't think I don't think you have to play it this safe I think you could run this up higher I think you could bring this down lower if you're using pavers or small brick though remember our channels got real tight they got less than four inches so um, with fire brick you could get away with with, you know, bringing this channel down and this channel up, but with the pavers, when I started to do that, you know, there wasn't a lot of room. Uh, there was not a lot of room for these channels. So, yeah, I wouldn't, with the pavers, I'd create more room, like in this type of situation. 
And then you could do all sorts of things. You could build brick up along the back to insulate it. What I was saying about the fireplace solution is basically to, to, to end it here and to, just to run a stovepipe, you know, out the back into the, into the chimney here. So, oh boy, guys, that was, uh, was a little bit more than I thought it would be. It took a long time. I hope you got something out of it. And uh, for anybody new, that's not what this channel's about. Thanks for being here.